right, Paps, how are you feeling ahead of your return? Um, yeah, I feel excited. I'm, uh, yeah, it's been a while, so I'm going to have to remember what I do for my pre-game routine. But um, yeah, I think it helps that it's a home game as well. So don't have to worry about travel. Um, can just yeah, go about what I usually do and yeah, hopefully a big crowd at Amy Park. What's it been like for you the past couple of weeks, just being back and being back amongst the squad? Uh, yeah, it's been oh, it's been different. Just uh, obviously not inside all day now, so out training with the team. Um, but I feel like I've learned a lot the past 12 months, so it's it's been good to put that into action over the last three weeks. And uh, yeah, now it's yeah game time, so I just got to put it into games and hopefully be good from there. But yeah, it's it's been so different. Um, everyone's been awesome. The boys celebrating it and. Yeah, getting around me, which has been a cool feeling. And you've had a long time to think about what that moment will be like when you do eventually run out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done a lot of uh, visualization, that's for sure. I've probably played this game out a thousand times. Um, even like months ago, because I didn't know when I was coming back, it was like I'd visualize a game against the Raiders and then I'd visualize a game against the Panthers, and then here we are, and it actually seems real now. So, um, yeah, I think. It is a unique feeling. I think I haven't had a long-term injury before, but yeah, it sort of feels feels new. You feel fresh, um, and that excitement level is definitely back. One of the biggest talking points has been around your mindset and your mentality on this journey. What has your process been like? Um, yeah, I think early on it was all right. I sort of knew I was in for a, a long rehab, and um, that was I was okay with that. It was, it was a new experience, so it was somewhat exciting. Um, but as it gradually got on, I think you start to realise you get you just go crazy and, and you're just sitting in the club. I think there was a period there where I was just by myself. So um, yeah, the poor physio's got to rock up every day and, and put up with me. And some you have you have good days and you have bad days. And yeah, like you said, I, I do a lot of work on my mentality, but. Um, it does get you, you can't always be up, but as long as you can acknowledge them and, and move on from those days and um, just makes you appreciate the good ones a bit more. So yeah, the mental side of things is unbelievably tough, but it's these moments now where we, we sit here and talk and um, you can actually picture a comeback that it feels um, all worth it. You were pretty adamant on having no return date set. Um, what was that like for you when you put that out there and the reaction was pretty positive? Yeah, I think that's probably the hard thing, I think, especially for like, my family back in Sydney is they'd see a report that I'd be back at this date and then I think once I wasn't back at that date it might just set off a bit of um, unnecessary stresses just being like, well, has something wrong happened? Is, is he really progressing well? Is he actually going to come back at all? And I think I sort of come out in the front foot and just said there's no return date purely based off it changes week to week. and. Um, yeah, I don't want to take any shortcuts with my rehab and I just want to make sure I'm doing it right and um, the club was really supportive with that which was good but yeah, I think it's one of those things where you usually have a timeline on things uh, but I, I didn't for this and although it was hard, it had, um, I think while I was doing my return to play rehab and, and whatnot, it made sense um, because some days you go forward but then you probably have more days where you're going backwards and it's, it's like you revisit something in a month and you're actually better at it, but in that period in between, it's, it's not smooth sailing, it's not linear. And um, yeah, that's probably one of those experiences that I've been through now that I'm, I'm happy I didn't set a date on um, because it made me just tick the boxes more and be confident to come back. On that, you went to America and spent some time with Bill Knowles. In hindsight, how much of a difference did that make to your recovery? Oh, massive. I, I, I still say to people to this day, I reckon it's the best thing I've ever done for my career. Um, for the knee, yeah, awesome, but even just in terms of preparation and the way you go about training now and even interacting with people who are in a rehab group, like it's it's a lonely place to be and um, there's a lot of time we didn't actually think about how my knee was feeling. We'd just be doing different movements that I never thought I could do, but you just unlock that potential and then you sort of move on from there. So. It was amazing, I got a lot out of it. Um, forever grateful for what he did for me and, and forever grateful for Grilled for, for funding the trip. I think it's, um, once that op opportunity popped up to go, it was, yeah, it was a bit of a no-brainer. So um, yeah, best thing I've ever done for my career. Um, hopefully I can keep building on that now and hopefully no more long-term rehabs, but if anyone is going through something similar, I feel like I can relate and um, be that person who can help them out a little bit as well. And what was the process like with him after you came back to Melbourne? Was there any contact? What was the process? 
Yeah, we, um, we'd sort of contact each other every couple of months. We'd actually come sit in this room and we'd get him on the big screen and zoom him in. And um, he just, our physios would talk about where I'm at and what I need to improve. And um, he would chip in and say, okay, yep, sweet. Let's look to do this now. And it just gave me that reassurance that I'm on the right path. And um, if I had any concerns that he would pipe up as well and he would back me. I think that's what was really important is he had my back and he knew I mean, he probably didn't know how I felt, but I felt like he knew how I felt. And um, I feel like you can create a connection to someone a lot easier when they can sympathize and empathize with you. And he was like that. I think he's, I only knew him for two weeks, but he felt like a good mate after it. So um, yeah, we still stay in contact a little bit. He sent me a message before the game, my first return game. And um, <laughs> yeah, he just told me to go brain it and back myself. And I think that's what you want to hear from someone who's um, seen a bit of the journey. I know it was only two weeks of the journey, but yeah, he was a massive part in um, the return for sure. It wasn't that long ago now that you had your first running session and then your first contact session. How did you pull up after those? Yeah, well, I think my first running session, I did a lot of work on the sand and um, built some capacity up that way. And then I think my first running session, gee, it was a while ago, I remember actually, it was with Joel, it was with, um, Joel Selwood out in uh, the Demons Oval. And felt really good, felt clear, um, felt smooth, but then I pulled up really rubbish from it actually. And I think it set me off for another month. And that was one of those setbacks where you think you're there, but you're not quite. And um, so I had to go through the whole process again, had to do some more testing. And it was probably the second time where I ran where I was like, oh, like, I was actually nervous for this run because I felt fine before the last one. And then I pulled up rubbish. And um, yeah, the second time, lucky enough, I was all right. But even since my first game back, you have little hiccups here and there, and um, that's just the new normal now. You've you got to take a lot more care in it, a lot more pride in your um, pre-field sessions. And yeah, I don't know if that's age or just <laughs> the injury, but I've got to take a lot more care with what I do now and um, yeah, my, more due, dil due diligence, which is something that I've always been pretty big on. But yeah, there's more attention towards the quads and the knee, and um, it's a bit like going to the days where you could just run out in the field and sprint and kick the footy, I've actually got to spend half an hour to warm up and um, take care of it. So a little bit different now, but at the same time, it's, um, it's happened for a reason, I guess, whether that makes me be able to play for a bit longer when I'm older or, or whatnot, um, I've just got to take it as that. And do you think it's made your game more intricate now that you are paying attention to those things? I think so. I mean, I reckon I've been, I've probably matured the last 12 months. Um, watching the boys play and, and having a bit of a say of what they're doing on the field and um, certain moments. I feel like that's prepared me to come back better than I thought it would. And um, yeah, now it's just seeing plays unfold and wanting to have an influence. And yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's definitely changed the way I look at the game and yeah, it puts a new perspective on things. You then went back to the Falcons and you had a pretty huge reception. What was that game like, but also what was the reaction like? Oh, that, yeah, that, that whole game day was, was a weird one. I, I think we played, it was like three or four o'clock maybe. It was an early game. Um, we usually have a pretty big nap on game day and I'm mean, just laying in the bed, just looking up at the roof. I couldn't go to sleep. I was just playing the game through my head, just thinking like, what's going to happen? Every scenario I was going through my head and um, I remember just being restless and didn't actually have a nap, but then got to the game and Went through my routine. Like I said, I actually forgot my routine, pre-game routine. So I was on my phone on the way to the game, just typing in what I could remember. Like 15 minutes before I put my boots on, I'd do all that stuff. And um, yeah, I was sitting in the sheds. Felt like, yep, I've done everything I need to do. Um, a lot of the pre-game revolved around making sure I was ready to go. And then, yeah, in the warm up, um, felt normal again. So I think that was, all day I was just not, not stressing, but you sort of just don't know what's going to happen. And um, once I got into the warm up, it felt quite natural again. And um, yeah, it was really cool. I had kids yelling out my name during the warm up, and it was all pretty hectic, but it's, uh, it's something I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm grateful for. Grateful for being through the experience, but grateful for the support I've had. And um, even, yeah, even still now, so many messages. And yeah, it's hard to put into words, but um, it's been a big, big help in me getting to where I am now and um, I'm sure for what's to come um, they're a massive part of that as well. We've asked you this before but when you do think about running out for that first time what's the first word that comes to mind? Yeah I think I said emotional last time um, 
we said this, but <clears throat> I think well, the first word that comes to my mind, I th- yeah, like probably just grateful. Really. <laughs> I think um, I've probably said it way too many times here, but I can't think of any other words to sum it up. Um, yeah, grateful for a lot of people, grateful for the crowd, grateful for the performance staff, grateful for my teammates. It's um, yeah, it's one of those things that it's taken a while and there's definitely days where you don't feel like doing things, but it's all worth it. And yeah, I'm just grateful I had those people to push me um, throughout when I was having those rough days. And then after you have run out, what's the goal from there? What's next? Um, I think just to enjoy it more, enjoy the moment. Um, soak it up, but then just enjoy every footy game that I run out for ever again, I think. Um, if you asked me before the camera game when I did my knee, um, you probably just go through the motions and that's sort of how you are. But I think, you now, like I said, it puts things into perspective and um, you just got to take every game like it's probably going to be your last and just appreciate it because, yeah, once it's taken away from you, it's, it's not a nice feeling and, um, yeah, you just got to make sure you're happy, you've got a smile on your face and you've prepared during the week that whatever comes up, you can face it.